If you think about your wish list, transporter or big van, might it be this one? Let's find out together with the Volkswagen Multivan T6, the special edition here, the Generation 6 Bully. The Bully with B-U-L-L-I, not the Bully in school, for example. Exterior, special edition, interior, high equipment, and also the driving experience, everything about this vehicle here and much more here in Autogefühl in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go! This is one of the very few cars where I don't have to kneel down to be in the same height in the car. You can see the special edition paint, white and red, retro style. There are two special editions here, the Generation 6 model and also the model 70 years bully. Well, I mean, there are some schools where there are history of 70 years of bully, but here again, the car is, is meant. Got a 3D VW logo right here because the sensor is right there. In, genera in general, the Generation 6 has a little bit sharper headlights, but it's surely more an evolution and revolution if you compare it to the predecessor. The Multivan is the passenger version, the top class passenger version of the Volkswagen Transporter. Here, 4 meters 90 or 16 foot 1, 3 meters of wheelbase. And you can see here the special paint again, here also with the bully as we call it in Germany, then the retro 18-inch spec wheels. Of all, it really reminds us of the T1, the very first generation. And everything is here about form follows function. So, however, you know, also with the chrome strip here, and especially in the special edition, it gives you some more design than, than it would be just a normal one. It's also available as a pure transporter where you don't have any glass here and also this between version, the Caravelle, where you have a little bit more transport but also passenger. But this one here focus on the passenger transport and then we'll also get an interior look of that inside very soon. Well, the rears are also about form for those functions. It's just that the taillights, they form a nice LED E then at night. This was a good effect. And if we directly take a look inside, um, there are different hatches available. Fully manual, fully electric, and this one is the one in between, you see, with a closing help. So the last bit has a soft close, let's call it that way. I mean, not a bad solution at all. And when you open it, you can also stand on it. I'm 1 meters 86 or 6 foot 1, and that is perfectly fine for me. And if you're a little bit smaller, you also can pull down the hatch again. Well, the trunk is um, this, by the way. <laughs> small uh, electric vacuum cleaner that we can clean the cars while we drive them also you know that everything is clean here service for you um you know you can put it like this that you fit a trolley in here and still have a lot of room for the passengers but you see here those sliding rails and this one by the way if you remove this plastic here better to do it like it with a screwdriver so if you put that one up you can also remove the whole bench this is also possible most important is this cover here because then with number one i can um, actually flip you know the, the bench here on the top side that would be possible and with pulling number two i can slide it forth and back and it depends on the interior setup i could put it all the way back then we would just have a small trunk like this more space on the inside but i can also push it forward if i you know set the seats up differently in the in the interior so you have a lot of possibilities definitely with that one Maybe this one here would be an easier mechanism to let this in, maybe a folding mechanism. That would be quite nice as well. Here it is, open and then here to um, remotely open the side doors. This is quite handy. And then for the trunk, but here as we don't have the fully electric, it's not really that useful. 
door closing sound solid here by the way then you can open the, uh, the fuel at blue SCR cleaning very important of course for the diesel for the NOx then inside of the doors hard plastic in the lower part here a lot of room also here for, for bottles and stuff then this one here leather red cover here you can also for example fit bottles so um, quite well usable for sure and a little bit soft touch plastic here in the multi van version so this one here is all about the high class materials too then look inside oh wow what a dream van interior the seats for example are available with alcantara in gray or black so alcantara on the inside and leatherette on the outside my perfect wish combination looks awesome and also good for the you know to not to slide too much on the seat and also good for climate comfort um, tested it on you know long-term motorway one love it and also electric seats available here in the top version you can move it any side this is for the lumbar support here for example three memory seats you can see it down there it's based on the high line so and this is also about the price the multi one starts at 30,000 euros then the high line or the the, um, you know, the multi one t6 generation 6 or the generation 6 special edition is about 47,000 euros in germany this vehicle as you can see it right now you know also with everything you know adaptive cruise control as we have it on the steering wheel dsg two liter diesel eighty thousand euros wow. that's really heavy you can change the steering wheel manually right there and yeah now it comes a lot more than what you really get sun visor pretty thick you can also move to the side right there nice lights up there then the uh, the main mirror frameless so also perfection in design right there everything is really clean here some stuff to put in it's also optional so a lot of things you can see here are optional and then you can also explain the high price um, yeah really a multi van dreamland you should better lease it probably and get a pretty big discount that is maybe possible but you know for a normal family in this equipment not really realistic here we can in the cockpit overview pretty clean pretty uh, simple layout everything can read very well dsg shifting lever then you can change the suspension uh, optionally in three different level comfort normal and sport usually i leave it in comfort it's sporty a little bit stiffer from the suspension you do feel that infotainment system here with a proximity sensor so more details to that then climate unit also easily accessible this one here electric functions for the side doors you can also press them here when you're a shuttle driver really helpful some more space up there and also down there but the cases itself they are not too huge and this nice aluminum look it fits very well to the gray alcantara seats for sure and the steering wheel classic volkswagen so you are getting used to it quite easily when you come from another volkswagen vehicle for example my favorite storage is this one here. You have the USB port, can put your smartphone in there, your uh, new auto fuel lanyard that you could get at the fan meeting. Hey, you weren't at the fan meeting, too bad. You have to come to the next one. Then you also get one like this. Then 12 volt power supply and everything is cleanly stored. Um, here the cup holders, well, they're a little bit shallow. It's just, you know, for a very small and light coffee, uh, you know, paper uh, cups or something like that but this one here will wobble around too much and then below that there's even one more um, this one is better than for bottles but you can rather just lay them in there this generation 6 special edition that does not only feature this 6.3 inch screen also three zone ac and seat heating here the infotainment system you can capacitively use it see it's super fast really responsive i like that phone you just connect here with your bluetooth for example easily done but you also have an app connect where you put in the cable then have android auto apple carplay mirror link and stuff so overall it's easy the system pretty helpful good overview super intuitive so overall really like it German lesson for today, elektronische Sprachverstärkung means is the voice amplifier, electric voice amplifier. 
and if you put that one here up I'm not sure if you're hearing a microphone but my voice is now being recorded here and directly sent over to the rear passengers and that one is easier to talk to your children when you're being on the autobahn and it's quite loud instruments here we go RPM on the left side speed on the right side and a small digital screen in the middle it also shows you for example that one door is opened at the moment so the side you can either open it here or also press on the key or from inside the vehicle i've shown you that and then you have a free setup for example at the moment the seats are facing backwards you can talk to each other here at the moment we have a lot of trunk but however i can also when i you know don't want to have too much trunk space in the rear i pull everything back again and then we have maximum space on the interior this is of course better when you have a lot of people traveling um, you know for short term and not with too much luggage but you have so much more possibilities actually so first of all what is interesting that the rear seats here they are a little bit more comfortable a little bit softer than the single seats in the very front and also the single seats here so this one is really soft seating and you know that's really cool for example uh, putting the feet up right there then then you have this um, this middle table you can either have for the front seats but also here for those um, back seats so um, they have beverage holders right there for example and then you can also put this seat here, uh, this uh, table up fold up like this and you have a real table here and you can also slide it you know for example to to one of the sides like here and have now a set of beverage holders right there so you can really have a good picnic here and standing still or well <laughs> maybe also while driving so it's a really interesting solution of course if you want you can also put it back in place again or you can also remove the table completely that would be um you know that would be possible but it's really heavy and so you shouldn't do it all the time and then for example here um we have some space here storage spaces below the seat and with this lever here we can actually um, flip the seat around but the thing is you know it can be moved right there from the other side then we can flip it around and of course it's not too handy to have the, uh, the have the table inside of the interior then because then yeah this way yeah this way it works see here so then you can sit after each other and sit right here it's a little bit firmer here the seat surface but still all seats are really comfortable you could also put them down like this so you see there's um actually you can spend a whole day finding out how to arrange the seats and then if you remove those rubber covers down there again and slide the seat all the way forward then you can also remove this single seat completely uh, on your own just alone it's really tricky because it takes you know a lot of effort they are really heavy they have to be um, so you better do it with uh, with two people for example and you can also slide the table forward again that you can use it better as uh, you know for example for the seats here so again you can play around with this one here so much more to do here for example also when you use the outside seats here as a, a nice armrest also with the cozy alcantara then you can also flip the whole bench from below there here like forward or backward it's both possible also um, set the angle and below there there's another storage for example here at the moment the tire pressure kit is mounted right there here we go and you can also have those special well the the glass is shaded here already in the special edition but you can also put it up the optional sunshade this is also possible in the seats before that and yeah we've tested is it as a team vehicle and um, surely fitting for long-term uh, runs with a lot of people and still with a lot of luggage you just have you know um, as you have so many possibilities you really have to be sure about how to organize everything depending on how many people and how much luggage where when how and this is actually quite a challenge but it's fun so under the hood wow with hydraulic struts two liter tdi with 150 or 200 horsepower as we have it here today or there's also a two liter tsi with 150 or 200 horsepower and the diesel in the normal transporter versions the lower one also with 84 or 102 horsepower for the commercial real commercial vehicles 
Either you have a six-speed manual or, as we have here today, a seven-speed DSG. Driving part. 2-liter TDI with 200 horsepower. Starting to rain just a little bit here at the moment. You know, this because also available with all-wheel all -way drive. We don't have that today. But usually there's enough weight on the ground that you don't get any wheel spin. With the biggest version of the TDI, you also have a good acceleration power on the motorway. For example, if you go um, you know, for example from, from 90 now and want to accelerate for an overtaking process, it's hammer. 100, 110. So it goes pretty fast and this is a really good autobahn vehicle. So you sit so upright, have a good view on the road, good view to the back mirror. Side mirror is also pretty thick. And you also have the blind spot monitor. We will see that one later in action. And the steering wheel is pretty light actually. So when you're parking in and out, you know, even if there's a little bit narrow spots and so, it's really fairly easy, although it's a long vehicle. I mean, three meters of wheelbase and still so easy to control. Also, well, with side wind, you know, there's a special assist against it. So you can order that one with the assistant package. But in general, the car is very stable on the road. And so calm also from the suspension, although it's not really the vehicle that it has, you know, the best wind. Uh, wind characteristics. It's not too loud here, so I don't have to raise my voice that much. And of course, as I showed you earlier with the infotainment system, when I'm talking to people in, in the rear, I can also boost my voice if I have this voice amplifier option. And uh, you know, I've been driving this vehicle to our fan meeting to Wolfsburg and, and back again, so I thought, well, one way was, I told some of you, about seven hours, it was horrible. But this one here also performed pretty well in traffic. Um, the traffic jam assist is not built in yet, so the ACC, the Adaptive Cruise Control, does not start from its own again. You have to press the pedal and then, you know, reactivate it on your own. That would be something on my wish list that the traffic jam assistant, that, you know, maybe also the car steers a little bit itself in traffic jam until a certain speed and then also continues on again like we have in um, other modern new Volkswagen cars. Um, but you know the Volkswagen commercial vehicle segment, they are rather conservative also with technologies because I think you know all, also a lot of our customers don't want to have so much surprises so we also take it step by step. But I think in this kind of technology segment why not offer it also with the traffic jam assistant. Here now you can see vehicles are approaching from behind when you see the yellow light flashing in the big side mirror. Really good to have that for sure. The ACC I set here on the left side of the steering wheel. So I activate it, activate it once and then I can set the speed here. And uh, I missed it now. I want to show you that, more, uh, that it doesn't start on its own with the traffic again. When we're standing still, again, really silent in here and this good overview also because the sides here of the doors pretty low. So you got this command driving position like in the bus, as it's all called VW bus, but not, not like B-U-S-S, -S, -S, Z-Z, but B-U-S, like the German bus also, also if it's a small bus. So ACC set here, for example, to, to 50 kilometers an hour now, and then the distance to the car in front of me is being kept, and steering wheel also very well to control and the car feels really flawless in driving. So, I mean, maybe a car SUV with a special good suspension is more comfortable from the suspension comfort, but you cannot compare this one here to, um, oh, that's a Mercedes V-Class. So that would be the, the main competitor, especially in this, this high-class version. I've also driven it. It is also a great van. I mean, those ones are surely the best on the market. Mm. It's, it's a good question how to compare the driving. Mm, here the, the T6, the multivan, feels a little bit more agile, I think. 
especially also because of the, the steering, you don't have to steer so much. And the V-Class, you have to steer a little bit more. Comfort-wise, I think you can, you can definitely compare both. I mean, sometimes you hear from the suspension, you know, they have a big room inside here. So everything is, might be tumbling <laughs> underneath the, the floor and so on. It gets a little bit amplified inside the cabin, of course, just from the, let's take it, physical acoustics. But then again, relatively silent for such a vehicle still. So, city, you know, although it's a big car, you feel so comfortable because it's so easy to maneuver. So it's not like when you're driving normal passenger cars all the time and then you get in this one here, that you would feel totally overwhelmed. And some other cars in this segment, yeah, you do happen to feel overwhelmed um, for the time being. And that really doesn't happen with this one. Also because the rest here is really this Volkswagen interface. Like you also use, you know, when you're coming from a Golf and then stepping in this one here, so much will be familiar to you. This would also be a, a big advantage, especially when you're, when you're used to that already. So, let's see. Always in control with a good view around. Now the ACC should start into play. Yeah, just not doing anything with my foot. Reducing the speed now. I can also set the distance, for example, reduce the distance or put a little bit longer. When I'm driving at higher speeds on the motorway, I'm always putting the distance a little bit higher just for, you know, for safety reasons. But usually you're fine when you settle like in, in the middle because um, the shortest distance is not long enough that it would protect you against uh, fines for you know too short distance. But when you set it too long, it might happen that someone crosses your lane and says, "Yeah, I know that's a good spot to, to go in there," and then your security distance is suddenly cut off completely. And yeah, I mean, so in the, I think if you go the middle way, that's quite nice. The diesel engine itself is really calm. You don't really feel it so much. It would be a diesel. Um, you know, it's the famous two liter TDI. But from the performance, it's really refined. And also from the, from the sound, it's really well insulated. You don't have this diesel nailing sound that you would feel, oh, I'm in this old diesel and you know, I rather would be driving a pedal engine. I mean, with this vehicle, if you drive long term it can make sense in a way it will have a lot of you know a lot of more consumption with the petrol engine oh no the rain is really starting to pour down so the weather forecast for the day was, was that it's actually stopped raining but um <laughs> hopefully we'll be over soon so the two liter tdi we're driving in now um as i said we had a long term test also um, a lot of motorway riding and we scored consumption of about eight liters on 100 kilometers. And it could be lower, of course, I would always wish that. However, I think it's still quite okay for considering the size of the vehicle. But then you know that with the petrol engine in, inside here, you will surely score um, about 10 liters or something on 100 kilometers. So you, you have to be aware of that. Of course, this figure also with a lot of autobahn inside. What was also quite astonishing to me, I mean, now it's a little bit low speed autobahn, but uh, parts of the autobahn I've, I've drove, uh, you know, a couple of, couple of days ago were also a little bit more high speed at, at times when I wasn't stuck in traffic. And this car is still behaving very well, even if you're driving, for example, 140 kilometers an hour. Still so much sovereignty in driving. And I think that's also one of the main points. There is no such thing as back pain, no, no matter how long your road trip might be with this vehicle. And so this makes it just a great travel mobile. And for example, you know, my, my team members who are guests then behind me there, uh, switch the seats around and you could put the feet up, for example. And that makes traveling with this vehicle especially so comfortable also for the rear passengers, which is also, I think, one of the main aspects here. So I think we can say this one is basically unmatched in this, in this segment here. But of course, I mentioned it earlier, 
you also pay a high price, very high price for it. And now the conclusion, VW T6 Multivan in the Generation 6. Really attractive, retro style, I so like it. Uh, there are also other com color combinations available, for example, blue with silver, that's my absolute favorite one. And I mean, I would really like to own one. Um, so, so good to use for, uh, for video productions, for example, as a production vehicle, get all the team inside there, all the luggage, long run, that would be amazing. But then again, ah, yeah, it's so expensive. So for a normal family, probably the Caravel version would be better. The interior is so well processed, great materials also, especially with those Alcantara seats we had here today. And driving, hardly any other vehicle in this segment can match it. It's calm in driving, very comfortable, refined also from the performance. So it's really, in this segment, I think a flawless vehicle besides the price again. I would like to hear your feedback on the vehicle. And of course, I will see you at the very next Auto Fuel episode with me, with Thomas, or AJ, or Brian, or Holger, and all our crew that you have also probably met on the Fame Fan Meeting or in our team episode. Of course, Auto Fuel will remain your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars.